Today we're going to think about internal categories in CAT, and we're going to show that these are something called double categories. We're going to look at internal categories in CAT, which is the category of small categories and functors. Now remember, an internal category has an internal category is a diagram like this is a diagram like this. So we have a source and target inside an internal an internal category category in E. An internal category in E is a diagram like this in E, equipped with composition and unit. So if this was a diagram in CAT, what would this actually give us? So if this is a diagram in CAT, if, if A and B are categories, and S and T are therefore functors. Well, in that case, B itself has a set of morphisms and a set of objects, and a pair of source and target morphisms, and A has a set of morphisms and a set of objects and a pair of source and target uh, morphisms. And then our functor has an action, the functor S has an action on morphisms and an action on objects, and functor T has an action on morphisms and an action on objects. So we get a diagram like this. And what this actually gives us is four sets of things. And what these are going to be are the following things. A0 are going to be zero cells. A1 are going to be interpreted as vertical one cells. The B0 are going to be interpreted as horizontal one cells. And B1s are going to be two cells, which have the following rather interesting shape. They sit in little squares. Now, most of the two cells that we've seen before don't sit in little squares. They sit in little globular things like this. But now we've got the possibility of some vertical things. Because look at what B1 looks like. It has a source and target in A1. So it has a source uh, vertical one cell and a target vertical one cell. But it also has a source and target in B0. So it has a source horizontal one cell and a target horizontal one cell. And the commuting conditions here tell us that the corners of this square have to match up in this neat little squarish way. So now you might ask yourself, what an Earth's Earth kind of composition do we have? Well, there are two things going on here, right? There's first of all the fact that B and A are themselves already categories, and that means that they come equipped with composition themselves. So the B1s, which are these vertical um, two-cell looking, these square two-cell looking things, they can already be composed with each other along the B zeros, which is the horizontal one cells. So this gives us a vertical way of stacking two cells together. And in A, we've got the vertical one cells and the zero cells, so it means that the vertical one cells can be composed with each other as well. But what about the composition for the internal category itself? Well, that's going to give us composition along the vertical one cells. So we have two kinds of composition of two cells. So we have composition of we have composition of horizontal one cells. We have composition of vertical one cells. And we have two kinds of composition of two cells. We've got the vertical kind and we've got the horizontal kind. And this one comes from composition in B. And this comes from composition in our internal category. And 
in fact, what this gives us is that we have the horizontal bond cells forming a category and the vertical bond cells forming a category as well. So in fact, these form a category, form a category, and these form a category. It's worth noting at this point that if all your vertical one cells happen to be identities, you would come straight back to the notion of an ordinary two category. NB, if all vertical one cells are identities, we just get a two category. And it turns out that the notion of a two category and the notion of a double category are closely related, but they're not exactly the same. Of course, if you had all your horizontal one cells being identities, you'd sort of symmetrically also get a two category. Well, that's all I'm going to say about that for today.